you for uh I want to thank each of you for investing your time to uh, join us to gain wisdom so we can each individually and as a team, <clears throat> you know, impact more people in a better way. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we live in a very uh, competitive world and that's going to be the topic today is, is how to deal with that competition. We run into people that <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> that are already <clears throat> boy, <clears throat> already taking products and uh, they want to know how ours compares to theirs. And uh, we've got a great speaker today to help us with this. <clears throat> so we can, you know, help people to take the best products, which we know are Neolife. And because we've done our research. And we've seen the results. And uh, we've got Don Holsinger on today, who's going to share his wisdom with us about how he goes about doing this. And, and Don and Laurel, his wife, um, have uh, for 17 years, they qualified for World Team. You know, they've raised four wonderful children, homeschooled a couple of them. Uh, Don has served all of us uh, through his military service for 20 years in the Navy. And uh, since then, Don was a college professor in marketing. And a few years ago, got a PhD in end time prophecy. And he preaches on that topic in churches. And uh, today, though, we're going to talk again about how to handle people that ask us how do we compare. And, you know, one of the great things about this business, and we talk about it is, 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 is that we can make great friendships that can inspire us to live a better and bigger life. And I can say Don and Laurel are two people that have done that. They have been such gifts to me in my life, sharing their wisdom. And, and so many of you on this call uh, likewise fit into that category. Um, so Don, uh, thank you for volunteering today to give your time and give your wisdom. So if you could start sharing with us some of that great wisdom you have. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to say that our prayers go out to uh, Chelsea and Josh for the uh, situation that they had the other day. And we just hope she has a full recovery and everything is fine. Um, let me start off by saying that uh, Neolife does not need excuses. We don't need to apologize for our products. Uh, we stand alone as the best product in the industry. Uh, we have products with quality, purity, and potency. Our science, we had the first legitimate scientific advisory board that formulates and publishes their studies and provides us with the best product we can have. We've got longevity, 65 years. Uh, we are the oldest US owned nutrition company in the network marketing industry. Uh, we have an ownership that is financially sound and dedicated. Uh, we have the logistics. We have our own manufacturing facility. Uh, we have an infrastructure that's dedicated to product customers and the distributors. So we stand far and above everybody else in the industry. However, it seems like every week, there's some new company that comes out with a special marketing hype, some secret product that comes on the scene and we often encounter someone who wants to know why another company's product, maybe even the one that they are taking is just as good as ours or maybe even better. Uh, you don't need to become an expert on the other companies, uh, but there are some things that you can look at in order to evaluate these other companies. And I usually look at four different areas. Now, 
I'll explain these by using one of the companies that I previously reviewed, and it's a company called Balance of Nature. Now, if you've watched conservative TV lately, you're probably tired of Balance of Nature ads. Their key product is fruits and vegetables, and their commercials feature testimonials. We don't know if they're paid or they're just doing it, uh, but testimonials on their product. Well, the first thing that I look at when I look at a company, number one is the credibility of the ownership or the leader of the company. Now, Balance of Nature uh, was founded by a guy named Dr. Douglas Howard. Uh, he's a chiropractor who uh, practiced for a few years in chiropractic in Utah. Uh, he then went to, and I, I don't understand this, but he went to Russia and he attended Pavlov First Medical Institute to become a doctor. He got his doctor degree, but he's never practiced as a doctor. He's never come back and passed the test or even tried as far as I know to do that. He formed Balance of Nature in 1997. Now, what I usually do is I get this information from the company website, or I go online under the name of the person and ask for their bio. I also ask if there's any lawsuits against them, the name with lawsuits or legal or scams or criticism, and try to get as much information as I can. Uh, some of the companies out there, their owners or their leadership have owned three, four, five, maybe six other companies that have either folded or went in for a short time, made the startup money and then sold out. Uh, they've had to close down because of legal issues. The second area that I look at is the credibility of the company. Well, we know that Neolife has a AAA rating. We are A+. Plus. We've had one complaint in the last three years, and that was simply a delivery issue that the company didn't know anything about. When the company found they were aware of it, they corrected it immediately. Uh, now, we do have a second complaint that just recently come in there, and this is something you all need to know about. There is a company out there called Neolife, N-E-O-L-Y-F-E, -E, that is using a scam on our name to try and get people. They actually have our customer service line down as their customer service people. So what they, they're a subscription service. So they try to get people signed up and then people can't get a hold of them to stop it. Um, Balance of Nature on their BBB profile are rated B. Now, you've got to be pretty bad to get a B rating. Uh, they've got 323 complaints in the last three years. Now, in August of 2019, the FDA sent Balance of Nature a warning letter. It indicated they had a dollar rated dietary supplements. They were not manufactured in the good manufacturing practice standards, and they failed to implement a system of processes to ensure the quality of their product. Now, the subject of this editor also made statements that, that the company, through testimonials, claimed they could treat certain diseases which would classify them as a drug. Now, you can get this information simply by putting the name of the company and go to the BBB profile for them. Uh, some people, some companies out there have had as many as six and 700 complaints in the last three years. Once again, go on Google, put in the company's name, lawsuits, legal violations, scams, and you, you come up with this information. Now, the third area that I look to is the credibility of the product. Uh, it's well known that fruits and vegetables are good for you. Most people do not get enough of them. So this is what the company is based on. Now, 
What balance of nature is, they take fruits and vegetables, they flash dry them, ground them up into a powder and put it into a capsule. So you're getting very, very little of the fruits and vegetables. There's no evidence indicated that their product is standardized. We don't know what it is from one batch to the other. It should also notice they don't even have control over their manufacturing because it's done by a third party. Um, now, what the company is selling is not complicated. Like I say, freeze dry powder from fruits and vegetables in a little capsule. Uh, this technology has been used for years by various other companies. On their website, they do make some questionable claims about the benefits of powdered food. I'm going to quote from their website. It says, the scientific blender recipe developed by Dr. Howard does not use a full serving of each fruit and vegetable. Through trial and error, research and experimentation, a precise and balanced combination was discovered. This balance is what gives us the wonderful results we enjoy today. Well, this statement seems to suggest that their product is more effective than the equivalent of dose of a whole food, which is not supported by any kind of science. They also indicate that it was this Dr. Howard, a chiropractor with a medical degree that he hadn't been able to get licensed in the United States. He did the formulation and the development of it. Now, they also claim, and I quote here, with some of the fruits and vegetables you eat, as little as 5% of the available nutrition will be absorbed because it has not been properly masticated or chewed. For example, when we eat an apple, we chew it, but it's swallowed in chunks. To some degree, this inhibits the absorption of the nutrients within the apple. Now, they seem to be saying here that there's no reason to eat whole food because you don't absorb it. I mean, they don't cite a source for their statement simply because it's not true. You know, whole food is what you want to eat. We add to it to try to supplement it. Now, one of the things you do, which I believe is very important, is you check the ingredient label on the product. Uh, what I try to do whenever I look at any product, are they natural or are they synthetic? And there's a couple easy tests for that. The first one is go to their vitamin E. If, if you go to Neolice vitamin E, you'll see it's DL, I mean D, alpha to cough for all. If you go to other ones, many other ones, matter of fact, everything at Walmart or at Costco or any of those places will say DL alpha decopherol. That little letter L indicates the product is synthetic. And that is a wide open hint on it. Now, if you go to some of their other things, like a score, if it says, our vitamin C is ascorbic acid, but doesn't give a source. It's probably synthetic. Same thing with riboflavin and some of the other things. It is probably synthetic. You can find online some very good resources on how to tell a synthetic vitamin. Uh, are the products banned in other countries? Uh, you know, the company Plexus has two products. One is their accelerator for their weight control program that's banned in Australia and in the UK. As a matter of fact, I think it's banned in the European Union. It's also not allowed to be sold on Amazon. It's under a banned subject because of some of the ingredients which people think are harmful. Now, Australia and the European Union is actually far ahead of the United States in some of their restrictions and their recognition of harmful items. Do they have a history of adulterated products which contain dangerous or harmful ingredients? You can do that by going online and put the company and say FDA warning letters, and they will come up with all the warning letters that have been on that company.
if they're doing their own manufacturing. In this case, as I was able to decide from some of the information they didn't, but it can be difficult to determine it. The final item is the credit, and this is where we stand, we stand out above everything, the credibility of their science. Balance in Nature claims that the, uh, their product is third-party tested. However, there is no third-party credible test results published anywhere on their website. You would think if you had a result, you want to make them accessible. Uh, their research page on Balance in Nature shows three supposed studies, but none of them were published in any medical or third-party journals. Now, the first is a four-page study on a Word document. Uh, first of all, they don't publish studies on Word documents, but it's on a Word document by a Russian doctor that says the product inhibits cancer in rats. The second one is also a four-page Word document uh, written by the personnel of PF. Now, what PF is, I'm not sure. Maybe it's a typo, I don't know. It says a, a, it's a Russian medical academy, which says that balanced nature will increase lactation in rats. Well, that's really good right now. I don't know of many rats in lactation that need our supplements, but that could be. The third is a clinical trial. It is also a four page word document. It claims that Ballast and Nature supplements can help patients with severe liver damage. It does not identify an author and it doesn't cite any published journal that it's in. Those are the three documents that they have. Now, generally speaking, there's some clinical research that says fruit and vegetable powder can improve health incomes. But the Balance and Nature product contains 2.009 grams of powder, uh, each serving that is, and that's pretty low amount compared to the amount used in the studies. So it wouldn't be applicable to those studies. There's a few other studies that show reduced implementation markers with oral consumption of the powders, but lack the dosage amount so cannot be compared. Now, we have to look at and look on the website who formulates their product. Do they have third party tests? Do they have clinical trials done on the product? Are they published? Do their test meet credibility standards? Number of participants, double blind placebo controlled studies, all of ours do. Uh, big thing are the tests that they do cite done on the product of Balance of Nature or the ingredients that's in it? That's a trick a lot of these companies do. They'll put a tenth of an ounce of vitamin C and then cite all of the vitamin C studies that say it's good, where they just have a very slight bit. Now, they also are heavy on testimonies. Now, testimonies are good. They're great. Unfortunately, they can also be a problem. Now, we have a lot of testimonies. Our challenge is testimonies. I have a whole book of people that we have on testimonies, but they also must be supported by legitimate science, and ours are. Uh, I think one of the biggest examples back in 1994, uh, Juice Plus had their first celebrity spokesperson. And in 1944, the professional athlete by the name of Osa J. Simpson spoke to the meeting of 4,000 Juice Plus people, and he told about how Juice Plus had made it so that his arthritis had been cured. It had improved his golf game, and he no longer had to take his arthritis medicine. Well, a few months later, he was standing trial for murdering his wife. And also in his, in his unreleased book, he claimed that he was too incapacitated by arthritis to have committed the murders, and he continued to take very potent arthritic inflammatory drugs. 
Needless to say, they did away with his sponsorship. Very, very good. You must have science, even though testimonies are good. Now, one more thing, or two more things, I went quickly and I'll be done. Uh, there are several websites out there that you can find that do evaluate companies. Uh, they look at the products. Now, you have to use caution when you go to these websites because many of them are anti-MLM or anti-supplement industry. However, they do do a very good job of evaluating the products. So they are very good for doing that. Uh, also, make sure you don't go to a website it's simply a commercial for the company and sponsored by the company. Now, we have one other thing. We have, uh, if you go to your back office in resources, under the Lifestyle Magazine, if you scroll all the way down, you will find about 50 or 60 documents that were published by the company back in around 2012. They are called You Decides. And in these you decides, I've got some of them that I pulled off of here. But in these, in many cases, and I've just got about 40 of them here, they will take our product and compare it to customers, other customers' product. This actually looks at omega-3 and it compares it to Shackley, uh, Nature Sunshine, and Herbalife's omega-3 to see how it does. But you can find many other products like that. Uh, that basically covers what I do. Remember, you're going to look at the credibility of the ownership, the credibility of the company, the credibility of the products, the credibility of the science. What I would do with a person who's like that, and they say, well, I take balance of nature. Is that good? Or is that, are you better? I would just say something out. You know, I looked at balance of nature a while back, but once I saw that they had 300 complaints on a Better Business Bureau and their science was very, very weak, I sort of shied away from it. And then I drop it from there and let them ask questions. There you go, Lawrence. That about covers it. I think you're on mute. Thank you, Don. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us, Don. And uh, that uh, paper he was talking about, Balance of Nature, that he did, he gave it to us and we put it on it, wisdombuilders.com in the questions and answers. And um, I wanted to give a few more pointers about this subject. I really appreciate all that Don shared there and uh, for him giving us things like the Balance of Nature that we could put in our uh, questions and answers. <clears throat> Sometimes when I'm short on time and all I've got is a few minutes and somebody asks how ours compares and I'm not sure if they're serious and I don't have time to uh, find that out. <clears throat> I just put it back on them and I say to them, well, our product has human testing with our product tested by researchers like the USDA and others and uh, the research that's been done in our products have been uh, published in world-renowned, uh, respected scientific journals like reference in the New England Journal of Medicine. And I say ours has been proven to raise the immune system 37%, 20 days on average, lowers inflammation by 68% on average, cuts down oxidation damage by 40%, carotenoids complex, and uh, been shown uh, to help uh, in human in an animal study to get 50% more nutrients out of your food. Those are some of the things ours has been done, proven to help with blood sugar level, lower cholesterol. We have different products that have been proven. And uh, I said, does the product you take, are you just hoping it works or have they shown you research on their products that they give you that much? So that's what I say if I have to shorten it down. And I always add that comment. All of us want the most proven health benefits for the dollar we invest, don't we? So I always want to ask questions. So that's when I have to do it in a short time. 
um, you know, uh, remember what we talked about before, 80% of sales are made after the fifth contact or seventh. And so, uh, you know, it's a lot of times, I think one of the first steps in dealing with a competitor might be to say, we've got a, uh, I, I, somebody shared a video with me on the five important things to look at in knowing how to pick the best supplement. And it really was informative. I really liked it. Would you be interested in, in looking at that free video, six minute video? I can send you a link. That's sometimes my first step because I want to, you know, ATM them like we talk about. And plus when I do that and I get them on the Facebook, then like we just, I just mentioned about how usually it takes five to seven follow-ups for 80% of the sales to be made. Well, that will at least do some of those follow-ups. I think if you personalize your follow-ups, instead of just letting the healthy living group do all of it, you're gonna get far better results even. I mean, thank God for that, but far better results. Again, that's why we have we message because we know that. That's why that last step is because you do want to have some more personal follow-ups. And one way you can follow up in comparing is to give the four criteria Don just laid out so brilliantly. And uh, he'll type those out, those four steps, and put it when we repost this later on. It'll be one of the comments, so that you can just copy that and send it to them, and tell and let them do it. Because people that do the research on their own believe it more. And then it's not me attacking their company. We just gave them four things, and they see it. But like every time we do a step, we always need to set up an appointment, right? We never should send a video or anything without sort of setting up an appointment in the best way. I do this like before I'm going to uh, ATM them I, or send them a video, I always ask, when are you gonna have a chance to listen to that six minute video? When do you think you'll be able to? And if they ask me, or even if they don't, I'll follow up after they tell me saying, well, great, I just wanted to know because I know if you're like me and most people, you get a lot of texts or a lot of Facebook messages and you don't have time to deal with them right then, but you open it. And then later on, when you want to get back to it, you forgot about it, out of mind, out of sight. So that's why I asked you, because that's when I'd like to send it. And so then after they told me a time, I take each step, getting a response. And then I say, and you know, I'm curious, is it, is it okay if I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contact you the next day just to hear what you thought about that video or what you got out of that research? So they have a timetable now that they're thinking, oh, he's going to call me the next day. Usually they will always look at the information right before they think you're going to call. <laughs> I hate to say that, but, you know, we were all like that in school, right? If they hadn't put a timetable and we had to turn in a paper, we never would have done a paper, written a paper in school. Most of us, at least me, I'll admit. And so <clears throat> I also think it's good to... If they're a very important person, I mean, it all depends on how important they are. That's where that inviting formula comes in. You know, uh, one of the, I remember <clears throat> listening to uh, an audio one time and it talked about, they did surveys with top MLM people that had built big businesses. And they asked them, what is your number one regret? And they said, spending time on people that weren't interested, really interested in taking action. Now, you know, we can't always tell that. And some of the people we think won't will and others we think for sure are going to join and do something don't. So, but, so we never can tell fully, but that inviting formula is, is really a lot of wisdom has gone into that. And asking questions is so important to find out where a person's at. Like before I'm going to compare, when they ask me to compare a product, I'm going to ask them, you know, what product are you taking? And they probably told me, but I'm just going to ask, what product are you taking? What made you start taking that product? Because I want to know, did their uncle, is their uncle selling it? Have I got to battle that? Um, and then I ask them, 
Are you just taking that product uh, because you're one of those wise people investing in your health and you just, you want to not have problems, you want to prevent them, you know, maybe heart disease runs in your family and you're just trying to be healthy to prevent that happening to you? Or, you know, again, are you just taking them because you're wise to prevent those problems? So I want to find out what they're, what's, why they're taking them. And then I want to find out, you know, okay, what have been the results you've got? So if they tell me they've gotten great results with their arthritis, then I'm going to say to them, well, that's great. I'm always going to compliment them. You never want them to feel dumb. You never want to attack their product, you know, and, and get in a debate yeah, because people do business with people they like and they like people who think they're smart. So if you make them feel like they're dumb, they're not going to want to do business with you, even if you prove Neolife's better. So I like to, again, follow the formula, the inviting formula, compliment them that they're investing money in a supplement. And again, use that term repeatedly because repetition is the mother of learning or the genius of learning. And that is, is we all asking the question, we all want the most health benefits for the dollar we invest in supplements, don't we? And the older we get, the harder it is to do it, right? That's why insurance, health insurance, life insurance goes up the older we get. So we want to find out the best product and always be switching to the best product since we can't get another body, right? Again, asking questions, getting them to buy in. So I give them those four steps. Maybe, you know, I'm trying to make my context. I use those four brilliant steps he gave and let them do the research and set the appointment to call them back. I want to do that research sometimes if they're important enough. And again, that's why I use that illustration of not investing off people. Um, you know, you want people to be taking actions, steps in between that they're looking at what you're sending them before you invest too much time sometimes, unless they're just super important and you think, boy, they have a lot of potential. So I'm willing to go the extra steps. But then I'm going to study it and do those steps just like Don gave so that I can add to the conversation when I call them back in case they haven't found out some of the information that I found then I'm able, after I've asked them to give the information they have, then I might say, you know, when I did that study, I thought I'd do it too, since we were going to talk about it. And I found this. It was really interesting. What do you think about that? So again, a wise man ponders how to answer. That's what Proverbs, that's what God tells us in Proverbs. And so be prepared when you're calling them back. Have questions written out, because again, questions like the inviting formula are so important. People don't argue with conclusions they come to, but they'll argue if you make a declarative statement a lot quicker than they will if you ask a question and it brings it out of them saying it. And so again, I hope you've gotten something out of this and, and it's, it's been of help to you. I know I loved hearing Don share and I appreciate his wisdom. I love that paper again that you can find on our Wisdom Builders site. And he's got a couple of other ones he's done. And uh, again, thank you, Don. And thank each of you for being here today. And uh, I know I've gone past the time, four minutes, but uh, hopefully you've gotten a lot out of it like I have. And uh, may the Lord bless your weekend. And uh, is there any question somebody wants to ask that maybe if we can answer it shortly, we will? You can just unmute yourself and ask your question. I have a question. Ask away. Yeah. On the ascorbic acid, I know our product says it's ascorbic acid and Don says most times that's uh, synthetic. I know we have a long answer in Wisdom Builders uh, website, but what is the short answer you give somebody when they ask about that? That's a good question. And I would I say got, that- I can so, take it, Lawrence. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. <laughs> um, I'll give an answer that you he, fill it in uh, if you see something more. Okay. Um, okay. I would say, like Don said, most of the supplements out there, they use the cheapest sources. So most people sadly get their sorbic acid from, you know, coal tar derivatives, whereas we use food to bring forth ours. That's my short answer. If you have something more you want to say, Don, feel free. Yeah, 
basically, if they just say ascorbic acid without giving a source, it is synthetic. We give it, uh, ours is ascorbic acid from rose hips and areola. So we give the source, which is the proper source for it. But if we, they don't give a source, it's probably synthetic. We we do on the all C. I don't know that we do it on the the um, super C. I'm not sure if we do or not because I knew I have to check. We we had some you know labeling laws or not. I, I remember Doctor First saying sometimes labeling right. laws are about as smart as the government where it comes from. They're dumb. So sometimes you can't put certain things. They limit you how you can say it. So. Um, but anyway, that's the short answer for both of us. Any other questions? Okay. Great. Again, I'll give you one more minute. Just unmute yourself. The bottom uh, left microphone. You unmute it if you have a question. Yeah. Uh, I oh, think sorry, Lawrence, I have a question. Um, I've had this just recently, but I think it's came out other times. Um, people out there have been hurt by uh, science, science. Uh, not believing it. And um, how do we uh, how do we come back to them um, when they when we try to say that this is you know we have all the research and scientific advisory board and everything and they still are convinced that scientists are no good. I guess I would say. Yeah, well, I'm glad you asked that question. And, and I first want to answer it, not your question, but a different one, sort of. Some, most people, a lot of people are, they believe in science. And so they, uh, uh, in other words, they, I'm sorry, they believe in medicine. And so they think uh, supplements are a waste of money. And with those people, I sometimes will bring up, that's when I'll bring up Dr. First say, well, you know, He's the father of chemotherapy, taught at medical school, started the cancer lab at Stanford, and he walked away from all that to join our company. So obviously, there's a lot more money in pharmaceutical if you've ever looked at it from a financial point of view of how much money they make compared to how much that product costs. Uh, they make a lot more money. And so he, did, he walked away because of integrity, because science demanded he do that because he knew that you could do more, which is why the USDA researchers came to us and tested us. So I use Dr. First to appeal to those people. I don't mention sometimes him doing chemo unless I'm going to do a very good job of talking about it. I avoid that for people like you talked about that are anti-medicine, and anti-science. With those people, I say, I can understand your skepticism. Sadly, the pharmaceutical company, uh, is an example, they've just destroyed science a lot. So I try to agree with them. Anytime I can agree with somebody, I wanna come over to their side. So I try to as much as I can and say, you know, there's been a lot of research that, you know, exposure that's gone on to show a lot of pharmaceutical drugs were bad for you uh, and things like that. So I can understand your skepticism. And one thing I love about our company is even though we've got the top scientists in the world, we are committed that you can't outsmart how God made our foods. And so you do believe that we that food affects our health, don't you? I mean, and I always like to give this example when people say, I'm not sure if supplements work or nutrition. I always tell them, I say, well, I don't care what kind of health condition you've got. Stop eating and see how well you do. You know, you've got, you better get your will in order because if you don't eat, you're going to die. Um, Lawrence? So, where this is coming from is she had a prospect that is going to try the vegan issue, but she didn't want the pro vitality because it's got soy in it. And 
she's she's convinced it's bad and because of the scam from uh COVID she doesn't believe science at all she doesn't even want to hear it. Well, you can't make somebody hear. Jesus talked about that. You gotta have ears to hear. So again, it goes back to my thing of faithful people. I mean, you know, isn't that what he isn't that what Paul told Timothy? Teach faithful people. And we've got to remember that in our business. Because again, the greatest regret is spending time with people who weren't willing to take action. Give your time, most of your time, people will have an open mind and will take action. So if they won't, you know, I would say to them, well, listen to this audio we have on soy and tell me what you think you know our company was willing to lose money i mean we kept you know we weren't going to back off and a lot of companies ran from soy after that information came out we didn't because we knew it was good and we were going to stick with it and you know so that video does a great job if they won't look at a video then then they're not open-minded at all and so you know i hate to say it but those kind of people sometimes you just have to go on to somebody that's faithful so good question yeah, i did yeah i did send her a video but i don't think she she watched it john millers yeah always so. ask never always remember before you send something you always ask if i send this will you listen okay make, th make them give a a, a, a commitment mm -hmm. don't send things without somebody saying yes they will Again, that's where that inviting formula, I'm telling you, there's so much, it's so simple, yet the better you can get at that, the faster you will help people and the bigger you'll grow your business when you get good at that. There is a lot of skill in that simplicity of that inviting formula. And the only way you're going to get that skill is to practice it. And to practice it and practice it again in every area of your life, not just with Neil life. It's got so much power of wisdom in there. Of being what? Quick to hear, slow to speak. I mean, again, it's built on biblical principles and principles that have been shown in, in, in research to help in relationships and in business. So is there any more question? Unmute yourself and say it. Can I add a little bit of perspective and value around that question? We Is always okay? like your wisdom and you have a <laughs> lot of it. Well, first of all, I just want to say Don and Lawrence, like that was amazing. Thank you guys so much for taking the time for, for today. That was so great. And Angela, as you were talking, I was thinking about, you know, we're always going to have people in our life that have that skeptic eye. For me, I welcome that. I think that that's amazing because that tells me and I tell them this. That tells me that you truly care about what you're putting in your body if you're questioning this. So one thing I would add around those situations is, you know, making sure that you clarify what they are looking for. Because if you know what they're looking for, then you can go around overviewing that. So what I hear you saying is you're struggling with this and you're looking for a solution. You know, so when you make it about what they're looking for and you peel that onion back and back and back on why this is important to them, and then whatever they're doing for their health now, like, how is that working for you? Because at the end of the day, how I think is if you're still looking for solutions, right, then maybe what you're investing in isn't really giving you the greatest outcome for what you were hoping for. So that's why these conversations happen. So if you can get into the heartbeat of what they're looking for and make it make sense on what they're doing, I'll usually ask people like, okay, so tell me what you're investing in your health. Like, what are you doing now? Are you taking any vitamins? Yeah, I'm taking vitamins. My next question always is, okay, great. Have you ever missed a day? Well, wait, let me back up. First, I ask how long you've been doing that. So I know the time frame, right? Okay, great. Well, have you ever missed a day? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're human, right? And then my next question to that is, did you feel the difference? And it's like, literally conversation just stops and they're like, oh my gosh, no, I didn't feel a difference. So it's just kind of just having that back and forth and making it more about them versus like, you know, if they're in that science mind, I don't believe in science. I don't believe in it. You believe in solutions, right? And leaning in your stories or stories that can relate with what they're looking for. Like that has always helped me navigate through those very skeptic conversations because like 
you can't undo somebody's story. I mean, their story is their story. So that's what's great about getting around the campfire and learning everybody's story because it might not be yours that you're sharing when you're trying to relate with someone. So I just thought I would add that. So maybe that can help in those kind of skeptic conversations because I, I definitely know that it's helped me. Absolutely wisdom. And it was the inviting formula that you were using. You're asking those questions to find out where they're at. And that's why, like I mentioned, what has been your experience with that product? It's always behind their question. It's always good, like you said, to say, why is that important to you? Before you give the answer, if you ask why it's important, that will help you narrow down to what's important to them because people have a short attention span and yours brilliant what you were doing with people is asking those questions so you can see what is important to them because what's important to you might be entirely different than what's important to them and so if you go ahead and give an answer because you think you know it without asking your questions it's like proverb says it's a shame and a folly to answer before you hear it fully brilliant ways to do it great example and uh just so people made sure they saw that in the chat don said on the uh the super C, it says uh, orange juice powder. So it shows the food source. I was wrong. So uh, great. Thank you for adding that so much. Any um, other questions? I, I had something. Can y'all hear me? I don't know if I'm on. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Well, so at my booth um, on Sunday, um, I did have one guy that, um, and, and he did give me his information. I'll say that up front. So that was cool. But um, he... When uh, he said, he was like, look at me, like, I, I, you know, I look, I look and feel great. And all I do is eat food, you know? And so he said, you know, I, I, cause I was giving him a sample of our protein shake. And um, I said, well, come on, just try it. Just give me some feedback if you like how it tastes. So, uh, so he did, but, um, but he just said, I just don't do supplements because uh you know, I mean, look at me, I got great energy. He was lean. He was playing in the tournament. He, he didn't, I can't say look bad anyway. Um, so he, he got out his phone and he showed me his app that he uses to, and he's showing me, I said, well, it's just kind of hard to get all of the, the, um, you know, protein, all the macros, all the, basically micros that you need in a day it, it's just hard to do so he goes oh well I do let me show you so he pulls out his phone and he, he shows me his whole lineup there and you know pretty much what he eats and how much um protein intake he he got carb and fat and I was going this is fantastic you know this is I'm kudos to you man that's that's really great but I I I I said, I think what is important though, is that it's really difficult. Um, kind of what you're leaving out is the, is the micro part, which is all the vitamins and minerals. And I, I would say that I'm sure you're eating good food. I'm imagining you're picking organic and all that jazz. But I said, it's, it's about your cell integrity. And I said, do you, do you, do you think that your body's utilizing all that good food you're putting in because I kind of venture to bet that with all the things that are taken out of our food these days, you're probably not. So even I, I would encourage you to continue your fantastic food routine, but I said, but I'd like for you to consider maybe looking at, at meal life in terms of improving your, and, and I started talking about the, you know, the fact that it improves the, the integrity of the cell. So all that good stuff you're eating actually gets in and does something good for you and then is able to, you know, also exit. So he actually perked up when I started <laughs> saying that. So I, I was so glad I thought of that. Um, and and um, anyway, I, I just wanted to share that because um, he was one of very few people that you know, kind of gave me a hard time. And I just went, I just went to that one factor. I think that was, ended up being a big one that he had not taken into consideration. So um, I look forward to hopefully talking uh, with him. And um, I've had a list of people that I have to call. 
So I'm I'm curious if he'll if he'll lend his ear further and maybe listen. But anyway, I just want to throw that in the ring. I don't Thank know if you. that helps. Yeah. Yep, Jamie, you made a chat comment. You want to say it verbally? What you said in the chat? Oh yeah, I can. Um, Julie, have you seen the Crotnoid Challenge? Oh, um, no, I don't think right, so. Well, I'm going to send it to you or I'll post it below once this gets uh, uploaded into the Wisdom Builders because okay. in the back pocket, you can literally just be like, yeah, you know, it would be really nice if we were getting everything nutritionally that we genuinely need, but unfortunately they just don't grow the food the same, you know, like, mm -hmm. are you eating 393 red onions every single day? I yeah, mean, if I did, I probably wouldn't have any friends, right? So like, I usually do it like, like to keep it light and conversational yeah. right. instead of like, dabbing with like the no, you have to do this. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Like, so when you make right. it like that, it like the perspective. Like, okay, well, three hundred and ninety-three potatoes. Like, I think it's two hundred and fifty-five heads of lettuce. Mm -hmm. Like, it's insane. And talk about the price point. Like, I don't want to be paying for those groceries nowadays. You know, right. so it's in the integrity of the ingredients getting into your system and right. you know, unfortunately, we're just not doing that so having that right. you're doing boots, having the crotinoid challenge like paper would be super cool to have sitting there because in those conversations like you can like point to it you know oh, okay yeah that sounds great and I yeah. and I did I did try to keep it light and not like argumentative or anything I just sure, sure. I'm, I you know I encouraged what he was doing you know, absolutely. and absolutely don't stop doing that. But let's make sure that everything that, that you're spending money on and you're taking time to do every day is really benefiting you, you know, and I think that that something like this could ultimately help, you know, and so you did but a the, great job. You did a very okay. good job. Well, I'll try. You, did, well. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bull of the China's clause that I have to <laughs> stop the <laughs> and slow down. Yeah. You did a great job. I, I sometimes use the 21,500 study that was done on the American diet. They took 21,500 and they looked at just 10 nutrients, just 10. We need a lot more than that. And they just looked at the RDA level, which is, again, some people call just above, uh, just, uh, above scurvy, not the ideal amounts. Some people would say they're, you know, the bottom, the minimum. And they just looked at 10 and we need a lot more. And out of 21,500 people looking at their real diet, not one of them got it. So mm. I'm a percentage person. And I say the chances are as good as we eat, we're still not getting what we need, according to that study and other studies. Mm. And uh, that's how I leave it. You know. And sometimes I remember I did a booth one time and I had a guy walk up to me. He says, why should I take supplements? He says, I've got friends that take supplements and they're sick. He says, I've got great health. My breakfast this morning, me and my kids, it was potato chips and Coke. So, <laughs> and I'm, you know, I don't have any health problems. So why should I do it? And I said, well, I said, do you change your oil in your car? He said, yeah, I do. I said, do you wait till it breaks down to take it? He says, no, I, I change, I, I do. I said, you do it to prevent it breaking down, don't you? He said, yeah. I said, well, what's more important? Your body yeah. or your car? Take it to prevent the problems. You know, who knows how bad those people would be if they weren't taking supplements. And they, I, I imagine they were not taking Neolife supplements. And there is a difference. So mm. they might be taking the junk ones. So anyway, that was my that, that That's a great one. I wish I was that quick. <laughs> well, you got this video. You can go back and learn Learning it. from the wise. I want to take uh, uh, Lawrence and Jamie with me to all my booths. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's why we did this video. And, and, you know, it took me time memorizing those phrases and learning about the 21,500. So, you know, sadly, sometimes we're not even willing to do what they do at Chick-fil-A and they, they teach them what to say. And that's what we have to work right. at. It's a, it's a, it's, a it's my pleasure, right? <laughs> it's my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. But you did a great job. You really did. I'm trying. It's like it's still a big learning process, but my husband gets very defensive, so it, he couldn't handle it. So he got up and left. But I was like, "It's okay." He's later. He's like, "Don't when people are treat you like that. Just you know, 
you don't you don't have to explain it. I said actually I took it a bit as a challenge and I just tried to calm myself and I just tried to think about what I've learned and what might benefit him and I, and I ended up thinking God put it in my head to remind him that like, he may not know how strong his cells are you know and so that was you know I said I think I made a good point and and it made him think so that was good, you know. So I didn't take it offensively at all. So no, you didn't. Yeah. Me. Anyway, awesome. that's all right. <laughs> anyway, well, that's it. <laughs> we're at the end. We've gone over way over time. Is there one more question we can answer in just a couple of minutes? Anybody's got one more question, and we're going to 